pretty funny that they asked me to give like some super uh, magnificent life advice to all of you when I'm still kind of like figuring it out myself. <laughs> but uh, I'll do my best. So, um, okay, the PDFs aren't really working that well, but that's fine. There's, there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to bring to you. First of all, one of them is incredible technology. Like somebody mentioned Singularity University. I got chosen as the first Finnish person to this place at NASA Ames Research Center in California, where they try to solve the world's biggest nine problems by using exponentially growing technology. That means leveraging robotics and nanotechnology and artificial intelligence and, and 3D printing and all this cool stuff to solve things like uh, poverty, hunger, energy, environment, food security, and more. And I have to say that in the first week when I got there, uh, I looked around and, and the 79 other participants were like astrobiologists trying to figure out what we're going to eat on Mars or, or a human rights uh, person who had uh, delivered shelter to almost all the slums in Chile or somebody who did some other magnificent work. And I thought, oh God, I hope they don't notice that they let me in here. Uh, it was really like this imposter syndrome. But amongst all this beautiful technology and everything, like uh, was the main point was bringing people together and bringing very, very different people together. So with different backgrounds, different nationality, different age, different ideas, and those people together would then use technology as a tool, but that wasn't the main point. It, the main point was the people. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today, the human potential. So yes, technology is amazing. You can, I don't know, send 3D printers to space like Made in Space did last year, or, or you can get people who are paraplegic to walk, or, or you can detect cancer cells, or you can even um, soon uh, code the human genome. And that's really, really cool stuff, but that's not enough. And my theory is that today, young people, like myself, have two questions in their head. Um, what can I do and what should I do in life? Maybe who should I do, but let's not get into that. I'm not good in relationship advice. Uh, what, what can I do is a really big question. And a lot of people will try and tell you what, what exactly that is that you can do. Um, <laughs> Your parents are going to kill me after this talk, so you can find me on Snapchat, Pia Henrietta. But what can I do is a, is a funny question because it's all made up of these uh, little things in your surroundings, like where you came from, what's your education, uh, what, what everything is surrounding you. And it's all actually a lie because you can do anything you want. And this is not like without work, you need to work really, 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 really hard to get to anything you want. But my friends who never knew anything about distilling alcohol started a whiskey brewery, and now they're making the world's best gin somewhere in halfway North Finland. Or another friend of mine, she, she wanted to be an astronaut always, and she was a Filipino woman who wasn't very good in math. And they told her, well, that's not a really good equation, you know. So I think you should forget about it. But she fought through every single wall that she could possibly find. And, and her company was, was the first company to send uh, tourists to space. So she actually came kind of close to that. So there is nothing that you can't do in this world if you put your mind to it and if you work really hard at it. And you can't do everything. I've tried it. <laughs> and it really doesn't work out. You go through personal breakdowns and all that stuff, but, but you can do anything. If you, if you really, really, really want something, you can do it. Um, but, there's always a but, which is always the catch. Um, in order to do anything, you really have to open up your mind quite a bit. And you're living here in this bubble. First of all, there's, I think there's many, uh, let's say there's a multiple uh, layered world. So all this technology that I'm talking about, let's see if these slides work. Yeah, okay, this is a standardized world, you burst your bubble, unlimited options. Okay, now we're in the bus. So, <laughs> uh, technology understanding would be super important because it, 
it actually changed my life a lot. Uh, the entrepreneurial circles and the people who I ended up uh, doing cool projects with and everything like that, they changed my life, but also the understanding of technology and of code and, and where that can be used. And it seems like something, when I was about 16, 17, 18, I was like, technology, pff, not for me. I don't know anything about that, not my business. I'm gonna concentrate on diplomacy and change the world uh, through that. But actually, I was putting something away that was completely my thing. And I, I just didn't understand it before because it seemed intimidating. It seemed like something that no one could possibly understand. But when you take a sneak peek into all of you are using devices like nonstop. Uh, you're all consumers of technology. Do you really want to be in that role forever? Like, you need to take part in in defining those services and those products that you're going to use, or or being able to understand all the potential of technology in whatever subject or field you end up in working in the next 20 years, and it'll be like 20 different fields, but. Understanding technology a bit is really, really important. So just have a peek look into code or development or, or how, to build, how to build stuff, how to actually make something with technology. It'll help you so much in understanding the world around you. I always think of it like before I knew how code is constructed, for example, I was walking in a forest and I could see all these trees, but I didn't have any idea that they came through, I don't know, that they have roots or that they use photosynthesis or that they need sunlight or, or stuff like this. It's as if I would have never taken a biology class and I would be walking in that forest. Because when you understand technology, you start seeing it everywhere and you're like, oh, that's a computer, that's a computer, that's a computer. I know how it works. But, okay, what was my second point? So, the world is multi-layered and the world is more than you are shown. And this came as quite a big shock to me because, um, uh, the bubble you're in, I thought, that, I thought that Finland is very global and that we get a lot of news and it's unbiased and everything like that. That's not true. Um, so if, if you have a little bit of spare time someday, by just comparing by the New York Times and by Helsingin Sanomat, and by comparison, what kind of news items do they write about? Finland doesn't have the economic uh, partners or the incentive to write about subjects that are around the world happening. So that's why we don't hear about them. Like, uh, how many of you knew that there's 25,000 displaced people in California because of the droughts, or that Poland has a cool startup scene, or that there was just uh, a suicide bomb that killed 25 people in West Africa day before yesterday, or that Indonesia's forests have been burning for over three months, and there's a half a million people that will die uh, prematurely because of the air pollution. Yeah, you didn't know any of these things. And the, like, this is like a small, small, small fraction of what's happening around the globe. But to understand that you can do anything, you need to also understand what's out there. <laughs> okay, moving on. I don't know how much time I have. All right. Uh, the second thing is... Um, what should you do? And this is something that's quite important. I've been, I've been trying to figure out what is value, and I've been trying to research what is value, any papers written on it. I've discussed it with my friends. I don't know what value is really, and I keep redefining it, and that's kind of interesting. But in school, you're taught to benchmark yourself. That's the way grades work. You understand that you're in a class with 30 people and whatever grade you get sets you up against all the people around you. And that's really, really wrong because we don't need standard people anymore. We need unique people. Like all of you are unique, you're different. Uh, in, in every kind of possible way you're different because millions of things have influenced you as a person who you are. And that's not something that should be wrong, that's beautiful. And those unique people we will need, and we need today. And, and stop benchmarking yourself against other people. And it's super, super hard, because trusting yourself is the hardest thing that you can do ever. But that's also the only thing that you should do, trust yourself, because the people around you will have a completely different environment, grown up in a completely different way. Maybe they had different fears or something. Like my parents, I think they were happy with what I was, all the startup stuff and everything I was doing 
when they heard me speaking on some public radio or something. I had been doing, like, working my ass off for three years, and then the first time that they actually say, oh, maybe you're doing a good job, is when they hear you somewhere, like, on some notifiable, verifiable, like, outlet. But yeah, so don't trust anyone else. Um, could you show me the time? Um, what should you do is not, obviously not something that I can tell you today here, but I can give you my theory of why I've decided to pursue uh, looking for problems and trying to answer them. So first of all, this is a really, really fun trip because if you all hold on to your seats, we're all traveling and this is not a lie. Uh, we're all traveling at 30 kilometers per second right now. And we're traveling in this gigantic spaceship. And we're going in the middle of nowhere. Like, there's nothing near us. There's dead stars, and there's some other planets that are not really useful. And, and there's no resources. And, and there's, um, I don't know, not, not much water or food or anything else except on our spaceship. And we're all in it together. And we know exactly, well, not exactly, we know about how much resources like water we have or food or something like that. So we should maybe start rationing them amongst us or help our friends who are not doing so well in another, another sector of the spaceship. Or, well, I don't know, you wouldn't go and damage the spaceship on the other side of the spaceship just for the fun of it or start drilling holes in it or, or, or think that Nobody will find out if I go and destroy a little, little bit of this other side. But that's, like, that's the reality that we're living in, uh, because we are on one Earth, one single planet. That's our only resource, and that we can calculate how much is used and how much can we still make of that. And that's kind of like pretty fragile and has a lot of problems. Not only its ecosystems, but also its people. And, uh, that's something that I'll, I'll never be unemployed because I want to answer those problems. And there's going to be a lot, there are a lot of these problems, and then people say, okay, hippie, that's very nice of you. Why don't you go and solve some problems? But actually, a lot of those problems, like who is going to make content or healthcare for the next four billion people who come online, or, or who is going to figure out how to desalinate water for the Californians who are in the dry, drought now, those are huge business potentials as well. And they're huge, huge potential to, to change like, the course of stuff. Um, so the second part of my theory, what should you do, is pick something. And this is not like what should you do is not something that you pick for a lifelong time. At least me and, and my friends uh, happens to be that I associate myself with a lot of very crazy people, but, but nobody's trajectory goes like a, a straight line somewhere. It's a big zigzag, and you end up looking for something here, and then it's kind of like something that you want, but not really, and then you hop to something else. I've been in restaurant business shipbuilding to diplomacy, and then I found entrepreneurship and startups, and then I found, I don't know, science and saving the world and everything, and I'll find different stuff as well later, but it, it it's a constant evolvement process, and it feels really good. But if, if you're going to pick something to do, like, and I'm not saying your next thing or your next project, but, but pick something worthwhile. Like, because I at least, I work so hard. I work so hard in the restaurant business. I work so hard in the foreign ministry. I work really, really hard, and I, I love working, and I love doing stuff. So you're going to end up slaving away anyway, and you're going to end up spending a lot of time of your life in what you're doing, whether it's a project or you have cool people surrounding yourself or, or it's a job. So pick something that's too big or it's something that's really, really uh, something too crazy. Because the small stuff, like, anyone can do that. But pick something that has, like, that might even change something in history or something that has really deep value for you. You need to define what kind of value you're looking for and then choose the larger stuff. Because if you, there's only a limited amount of time each day, my friend told me, and I think it's a good comparison. So, so whether you do A or B doesn't make a difference. So might as well do the bigger thing that has more value in it. And yes. <laughs> So, 
uh, two things. <laughs> My fancy life advice to you, you have unlimited options, don't forget that. You often forget it when you go home and you're like, Oh, I can't do that. That's kind of scary. That's uh, that's out of my reach. That's that's something. No, it's not. You, Finnish people think too much as well. You should just do stuff. Um, but you need to explore. Like you need to explore the world, and you need to understand a bit more. And it doesn't mean that you need to be an expert in everything. It doesn't need, mean that you need to have a degree in something that you can start doing something. But explore and broaden your mind with different kinds of people, with different opinions than yourself, and different kinds of medias. And also, yeah, find out what, what value means to you and try and redefine it constantly so that whether it's something that you want to learn at the moment, I want to learn about this technology and that's why I want to pursue this project, or I want to build a city that has uh, constantly evolving transport mechanisms, or I want to do this or that, build something, or try and, your next project, try and get it a bit too big than you can handle, and uh, something like a bit too crazy that other people wouldn't do. And then you can really, really put some effort into it and feel good about it, because that will be uh, amount to something brilliant. All right. Um, I hope that made sense at all. Thank you very much. <laughs>